Hello everyone. My name is Dar Rath and I'm the pastor at Faith Lutheran Church in Port Elgin, Ontario, Canada. And each week I'm bringing you a very brief message written by some amazing authors. And uh, this message, these messages are sometimes funny and sometimes give you something to think about. And so today's uh, message to you is actually a column that was written by my friend Dave Davis. He writes uh, columns for the uh, Hamilton Spectator. And this uh, title of this column is called Tethered. And I thought it was really interesting and I, I wanted to, uh, to share it with you. So Dave Davis is a friend of mine. He's a retired family doctor and uh, also an educator. So here's what he writes. I spotted it at a bookstore a couple of months ago, something called The Untethered Soul by Michael A. Singer. Not the kind of book I'd normally pick up, but the word untethered spoke to me in a quiet bookshop. The book cover asked, do you want to be untethered from past memories or current angst, freed from worries? Well, heck yes, most of us would be crazy to refuse. I remembered the patients I saw who suffered from their past or were hurt by the sharp edge of their own inner voices. Victims of abuse, say. Held back by the notion they weren't good enough, that they didn't matter. The book jacket said something like, rise above those feelings, learn to tolerate them, allow them to pass through you and out. They're human feelings, but they're not you. Well, good advice, I thought. Maybe some of my former patients have read it. Maybe we should all read it. And then maybe a month later, I was at a lunch in the backyard of a new member of our family. There were a handful of us, some of our family, plus two neighbors from the street. There was something special about that street. I grew up on it. In the west end of Hamilton, the escarpment looming above us, busy Aberdeen Avenue just below us. The steep slope between the two made for incredibly fast bike rides and some chilly snowy days, great toboggan runs. Today, it makes for a terrific walk. One part memory lane, one part stress test. At the end of the lunch, I was kindly offered a plunge into a nostalgia, a visit to her house, the one I'd grown up in. I was amazed at two things. First, how it had shrunk from the giant's home of my memory to something much more normal life-sized. Second, maybe mostly, how it all came back. The back staircase that I used to race down, the kitchen with my mother standing at the stove, the leaded glass windows, the, break, the bright sunroom, the old-fashioned phone at the foot of the stairs, now gone, of course, still there in my memory. I remember thinking how good it was to have roots and to be reminded of them. The conversation about the neighbors, the memories of my family, the girl I liked just four doors up the street, memories of my brother and his, and when he moved out, my own, attic man cave lodged firmly in my memory as vividly as if it was 70 yes 70 years before tethered on the way home i wondered about several things what would my life and that visit be like if the memories weren't so good depending on your perspective i was either incredibly lucky or blessed, or maybe both. What it would be like, I wondered, to be someone born into an abusive home, or born to wear skin that didn't carry white male privilege with it, or a woman born into a man's body, or someone born in the eastern half of Ukraine. What would that life have been like? It seems to me from this side of those memories and the thoughts about being tethered that there were a couple of lessons here. 
maybe more. First, know which memories are good ones, which ones are chuckable. Untether yourself from the bad ones. Hold tight to the warm ones that feed you. Try it. Think of it like you're cleaning out a closet. Look for the ones you should keep. Especially look for the ones you throw away or let pass through you and out. The second lesson, count your blessings. Even the poorest of us has them. Remember that, I thought the next homeless person you see, the next victim of, of abuse you read about, think about it. The next time you see an opportunity to give back. Wow, what a wonderful column. Thank you, Dave Davis. And thank you for taking five and blessings on your day.